Hi, it is communication and management communication in four. We are busy with module two, interpersonal relationships and social interactions. And today's lesson is all about communication barriers. So remember we said that a barrier or communication barrier is a factor that interferes with the successful delivery of the message. When we talk about Jacobson, when we or when we look at Jacobson's model of communication and we look at communication barriers, it is indicated with a broken line to show that in that some way, somehow, the communication flow is interfered. So to, this lesson here is all about possible communication barriers that could be there if you are in specific um, circumstances and you should be aware of these. Our first type of barrier is a physical barrier. These are things outside your body, outside the sender, that may have an influence on the, the, the message that will have a negative um, effect on communication. Think about um, a noise outside your classroom or a, a, a ringing phone. If my phone had to ring now while I'm busy recording this lesson, um, that would stop the communication from happening. So the examples of these are um, poor lighting, like when it's dark, you can't read the message, a ringing cell phone, or the one that we are all so aware of, um, poor cell phone reception. <laughs> you know, when you're trying to talk and, and you really can't hear what people are saying. So those are your physical barriers. Remember that these are the ones outside your body. Our second type of barrier is a physiological barrier. Now, you must be very careful to not get um, confused with physical and physiological and coming up. We have psychological and, and, and but this is physiological barriers. It's when there's something wrong with the body. In the cartoon, you will see death, the Grim Reaper, coming up and it says to the old man, I'm death. And the old man doesn't hear him properly. Okay, so he didn't, the old man is hearing him saying, I'm deaf, as in hard of hearing. Um, a little funny cartoon that, that perfectly illustrates the communication barrier there. There's something wrong with the old man's body, with his ears, so he can't hear properly. Examples of physiological barriers are disability, like an uh, unableness, hard of hearing, hard of seeing. When you have a headache, when you are tired, or when you are under the influence of any type of narcotic or, or alcohol. When, um, I mean, try to speak to a person who is under the influence of drugs or alcohol and you will find it really so, so difficult. Okay? Um, and those are all physiological barriers. There's something wrong with the body. Now, keep in mind here that this something that's wrong could be permanent like a disability, or it would be temporary, like pain, because then you take a painkiller and it goes away and the barrier is removed, all right? Next up, we get psychological barriers. Now, psychological barriers is to, has to do with the emotions. Think of psycho, head, emotions, mind, things like that. So, this is when your personality or emotions interfere with communication. Say on a Saturday afternoon, you walk down the street in your neighborhood and you see a man who is um, under the influence of alcohol and he is it's fighting and swearing and, and, and so on a Sunday morning you get to church and your pastor says there is a, a guest preacher and it's this very same man that you saw in the street yesterday. You decide already at that moment that you don't want to listen to this person. Your emotions are interfering with this communication. Same thing with when we are angry, when we are happy, when we are excited. Remember we said one of the factors that influence communication is emotions. So this is where that happens. The barrier is created based on how you are feeling. Examples of this would be when you are in love, you know, you find it hard to concentrate. A person with a pure, poor reputation, people don't want to listen to him or her. And emotions such as nervousness, when you are nervous, you tend to kind of babble or not be able to express yourself properly. 
So those are all psychological barriers. The next one is perceptual barriers. Now, perceptual barriers are created because of the way that we see the world. The picture here um, demonstrates it perfectly because there's a number, whether it's a 9 or a 6, depends on where you are standing. It depends on how you are looking at it. So I can't say that it's a 9 or I can't say it's a 6 because it's something different for everybody looking at it because it depends on where you stand. In the same way, perceptual barriers depends on where you are in your life. Um, not physically, not geographically, but the, the things in your life that make you see life in a specific way. So there are a number, quite a long list of perceptual barriers, and I'm just quickly going to run through them. The first one is background, and background refers to how we grew up, our, our domestic circumstances. So if you have older brothers or sisters, you can easily relate with somebody who has older brothers and sisters. If you grew up with a lot of money, you can easily relate with someone who has money. It's not always so difficult, especially I see it now in the time of COVID-19, where people who kind of have more, they don't really understand the plight of the people who don't have. They sit in their houses and they criticize and they point fingers, but they don't understand that people have to go out and that they have to hustle to get food on the table because they don't understand what it's like to not have. You see, people from different backgrounds, they, they don't always understand each other so well. So in your workplace, you are going to get to do with people who grew up different than you, who were raised different, who talked back to their parents and you weren't allowed to, or people who were, you know, so, and that carries on, that, that carries over into their life, into the way that they conduct themselves at work. So you need to be, you need to keep different backgrounds in mind. Then we get education and training. So as a college student, you go home and you look at that person in the street, living in your street. And you can fight me on this, but I know that I'm right. That you you feel a little bit better. You feel like you are a little bit better than that person who doesn't have any college training. I mean, you've had, what, two, two months, a month, something like that, a couple of weeks. And yet, you feel like you are a little bit superior than that person who didn't have any college training. So it's the same, it's the same principle. People who, it's very difficult for people, uh, someone with a doctorate, to communicate with someone who didn't even finish matric. I mean, when they start talking about academic matter, matters, they are, they, they, they are bound to misunderstand each other. Next up, we have intelligence, intellectual abilities, whether, you know, my mom says I'm not allowed to call people dumb, but have you ever, ever tried to speak to a not so smart person? It's the hardest thing. Intelligence definitely, uh, or lack of intelligence definitely can create a, a communication barrier. We have occupation, the job that you do. I fight with people all the time because they say that lecturers and teachers have an easy job. We get, we work until early in the afternoon and then we get four holidays a year and blah, and, and, and. But what they don't see is when we do go home, yes, we do leave early in the day before five or six o'clock, no? but we have to take papers home to go mark. We have to set papers. We have to prepare for our lessons. Holidays are often spent working. so. Those are the things that people don't see. And I fight because people don't understand that I don't have an easy job. But then on the other hand, I fight with my sister, for example, who's a social worker. And she keeps on saying that I have an easy job. But then again, she doesn't have an easy job because she um, has to deal with human emotions and um, poverty and things that I, you know... I, I know it's there, and, but I, I'm not on the front line fighting that. So we don't always understand each other's jobs. We don't understand that it is as difficult for her as it is for me, but it's different difficulties. 
interest. Um, I was standing in the queue at the bank the other day before social distancing. And that allowed me to see the person in front of me's film screen. And they were playing the game Candy Crush. And I said, oh, hi, um, what level are you? Because I get stuck on a specific level. And we started a conversation about Candy Crush. And then somebody else asked, one of my friends asked, do you know that person? And I didn't know them from above. So, but because we were both interested in Candy Crush, we could have a good conversation. Where you have clashing interests, you won't be able to communicate as easy. I mean, I remember my days before I became interested in rugby, where I would be in a group with all of my brothers and cousins, and they would be talking rugby, and there I was, and I didn't have anything to say. It was a communication barrier, because I just wasn't interested at that point, you know, so interests. Then we have needs. In our previous lesson, we talked about Maslow. People who have the need for food can't really communicate with people who have the need to be seen and to be recognized because there's something more pressing and more important at the, you know, on their minds. So I'm not even going to explain that more. You understand that one. Personality. We've also talked about this. This also goes back a little bit to your psychological barriers that, um, your personality is not the same as someone else's and you see the world different based on your personalities because a person that you might think is loud is not loud to the next person who is as loud. So it, it that could also create barriers. Attitude. Attitude refers to how you feel about something. So, and this is, this is my personal opinion. I'm not forcing it on anybody. So that's my disclaimer. But um, I look at people who spend thousands of rands um, donating to saving the rhinos or saving the penguins. And I look around my community and I see there are so many poor people. So why can't that money go for saving the people, building houses, giving bursaries? Why must it go to the animals? But that's just my feeling towards the situation. Okay, Somebody else feels different. People, they feel probably that people can work for themselves, but animals can't. So we need to give the money to the animals. So you see two different viewpoints, different attitudes towards um, animal conservation. And when you have different attitudes like that, different beliefs like that, it could clash and it could cause your perceptual barrier. Age. Hmm. <laughs> My nephew, I have the cutest nephew, really so cute. He so smart. You know? He says that he can't watch TV because the Teletubby is going to bite. And then my dad was asking, why, how? So you see this child, to him, in his mind, the Teletubbies biting is very real, but we know our reality is different. We know that um, Teletubbies can't come through the TV and they can't bite. So, but in that little child's mind, it's real. So, it you know, it's it's it, it, their reality is different from ours. And the same, like somebody much older, their reality is different from yours at this moment. So, my reality is different from yours. And so, because I'm older. So we all see the world differently because of our age, and that is our perceptual barrier right there. And then gender. I'm going to just put one question out there to make you understand it. All the guys out there, tell me about your periods, your monthly periods. Hmm. There's your barrier. And then lastly, religion. We have different religions in South Africa. You... um. We don't always understand each other's religions. And, and I mean, I've heard people calling, um, no, let me not say this, it's rude. But people from different religions see the world differently. If you have any questions, email me at jeffkester at gmail.com. Go to my Google Classroom, classroom.google.com, and enter the code 33H7WG4. Until next time, thank you for tuning in. Bye.